So as a former chief engineer, can you explain what the main reduction gear is and why it's important? Certainly. So the main reduction gear, in its simplest terms, is a transmission, right? It converts the high-speed, low-torque output of the gas turbines or, or of, the, of the prime mover uh, into a low-speed, high-torque output to turn the shaft of the ship. Um, and it allows us to do some of the maintenance items required, uh, such as clutching, clutching in and out uh, the transmission to, to rotate the MRG, to rotate the gearing uh, without actually turning the shaft. Okay. And so I think uh, lubrication is an important piece of that uh, process. Why is the main lube oil system so important to the main reduction gear? The, the, the main reduction gear is, is a case of gears. And because of that, because it's metal on metal, the lube oil system is absolutely critical to the operation of, of the MRG. Uh, and like everything we do, uh, constant, regular and preventative maintenance on that lube oil system is, is critical to ensure proper operation. Uh, and if something is operating uh, not in accordance with specifications, the only way to determine that e early enough is to, is to do, the, is to do the, the inspections and the preventative, preventative maintenance such as the lube oil samples uh, as required by both the tech manuals and the, and the, and the PMS. Okay. There's also a, a dehumidifier on the system. What is that? So the dehumidifier, if you're not operating the lube oil system, the dehumidifier uh, is in place to, if not prevent completely, then at least minimize the chance of corrosion inside uh, the, the MRG. So it's, it's absolutely vital if you don't have the lube oil system aligned and you're not actively uh, providing lube oil to the MRG that, that, that the, the humidifier be online operating correctly uh, to, to draw that moisture out and prevent corrosion. Okay. Now there's a periodic assessment of the flow patterns and spray patterns inside the MRG. Can you describe that process and why it's important? Certainly. So there are several, there are several required, um, required PMS procedures for the MRG, one of them being the uh, verifying the spray patterns. It is possible uh, that the continuous operation of the lube oil system can actually draw in contaminants even from outside the MRG, from the lube oil system itself. Certainly we've seen muslin bags that have gotten sucked into uh, to the purifier, sucked into the, through the lube oil filters. We've seen those, uh, that external contaminants cause uh, blockages in, those, in the lube oil nozzles. And when that happens, you're not getting the complete coverage that you need inside uh, to, to, to thoroughly cover the, the gearing inside the MRG. So those inspections are to ensure that that, that flow is, is unblocked, that those lines are clear, and that if there is corrosion inside the MRG, that that corrosion isn't preventing uh, proper lubrication of the gearing. Okay. And from your perspective, uh, what are the consequences of an MRG failure? So and we've, we've seen the consequences of MRG failures across the fleet uh, in the past even year. Uh, with, with, with several ships uh, due to bad oil, uh, failed oil samples, or incorrect PMS on both the dehumidifier as well as the normal operation of the lube oil system. Um, and what that does is not only is it an extremely, extremely expensive piece of equipment, but it cause, causes delays in their maintenance schedule, which of course causes delays and, and severe impacts into our, the Navy's operational schedule. So when those ships have to come off station, or if their, if their maintenance period is prolonged because of uh, MRG maintenance, then that means another ship has to be out there, another ship, another crew has to be doing the job that that ship was assigned. So it can have a pretty severe impact, uh, not just to that ship schedule, but to the fleet as a whole. Okay, and as an assessor, what advice would you give chief engineers, and what advice would you give to the sailors performing PMS on this system? So as an assessor, my advice to any chief engineer, especially those who are coming into their first chief engineer tour, coming into their first command, um, the, the M, an open MRG inspection is, is part of the, part of the recommended, part of the recommended uh, chief engineer turnover item. Uh, so after completing the, the SWAS Prospective Engineering Officer course up in Rhode Island, I felt comfortable coming to my first ship as a chief engineer. I felt comfortable doing that, and I did that as part of my as part of my turnover. Uh, the schoolhouse goes over it. 
Uh, they emphasize the procedural compliance required to do it successfully. And so for me, um, knowing what you're inheriting is a big part is a big piece of that. So it's it's in the benefit of the, the oncoming chief engineer as well as the benef it benefits the ship to, to open up that MRG and see where we stand. And that's a great way to get on top of any ongoing corrosion problems or, or spray nozzle uh, issues. Okay. How difficult did you find it to perform this PMS, the nozzle inspection? It's re for me, I didn't find it difficult at all to perform the maintenance. It takes longer. Uh, to, to inventory all your items, to dress out, to tape up, to follow all the safety precautions of this assessment than it is to actually open up the access panels and, and, and do the inspection. Um, so, and because of that, because it takes longer to do the prep work, a lot of times shortcuts are taken on the prep work, but that's gonna be what prevents you from, from contaminating the MRG and causing a problem where there may or may not be one already. That's right, so anytime, anytime you open up the MRG, there's always a chance of something falling in, um, whether it's coming from uh, debris or dirt around the, uh, around the access cover, coming from the overhead, or coming from the person who's, who's actually standing in front of that opening. Uh, so the, the safety precautions, the taping up of, of, of buttons or snaps and the taping over the pockets, all of that's absolutely essential to prevent doing any sort of damage. Um, at my, during my first chief engineer tour, I, I actually met with a lot of resistance from longtime engineers because there, there wasn't a, the, the PMS requirement wasn't there for it and they didn't want to take any risk by opening up the MRG. Right? And so it's, a, it's, it's maintenance and it's, it's, a, it's a material check that you have to respect the precautions for, but it's not something that you should be afraid to do. It's, it's, like I said, it's in the best interest during turnover for the oncoming chief engineer, uh, along with the outgoing chief engineer, to do that assessment, to open it up, to look at it, to see where they stand. Um, and as long as you follow the, the precautions, the, the risk is, is limited, and, and you control the risk uh, by adhering to those, to those precautions.